Yes, I'm a direct descendant of Isaac Newton. This apple tree in front of the Great Gate of Trinity College, Cambridge, is a descendant by grafting of that historic apple tree in Lincolnshire under which Isaac Newton sat when he discovered gravity. And it's been planted here because Newton was a fellow of Trinity. Here, in Trinity's historic Wren Library, we have an annotated copy of Newton's own Principia Mathematica, his walking stick, and even a lock of his hair. Newton himself was a direct descendant of Galileo Galilei, the father of modern science, which makes me a descendant of Galileo as well. And although you might not be a descendant of either Galileo or Newton, by the end of this short video, I will show you how you could become one as well. Of course, I'm not talking about biological, but academic ancestry. My name is Frank Stajan. I'm a professor of security and privacy at the University of Cambridge. I'm a fellow of Trinity College and I give people PhDs in computer science. I got my own Cambridge PhD in computer science after several years working as a research scientist in industry. I was the only student in my cohort to submit the dissertation in under three years, as early as the regulations allowed, whereas most of my peers took four, five or six years and uncommonly, my dissertation was approved without any corrections. During the third year of my PhD, I won a permanent faculty post here at Cambridge, we, skipping the postdoc stage altogether. I got a one-year scientific fellowship in Japan at Toshiba, and I won a book deal with Wiley. All this before even submitting my PhD dissertation. My brilliant PhD advisor was Ross Anderson. His advisor was Roger Needham, who invented the practice of hashing login passwords. His advisor was David Wheeler, who invented the subroutine and who received the world's first PhD in computer science. His advisor was Sir Maurice Wilkes, who designed and built the EDSAC, the first store program computer in the world, for which he got a Turing Award. These pioneers of security or computing were all people I was fortunate to meet in real life and to get to know well. Unfortunately, all of them except Ross have now passed away. I'm grateful to the Mathematics Genealogy Project, which allowed me to discover the eminent scientists higher up in my academic family tree. Sir Morris's PhD advisor was John Ratcliffe, in turn advised by Sir Edward Appleton, Nobel Prize in Physics, who had two advisors, Sir J.J. Thompson, who discovered the electron, Nobel Prize in Physics and Fellow of Trinity, and his student, Lord Ernest Rutherford, who discovered the proton, Nobel Prize in Chemistry. J.J. Thompson's advisor was Lord Rayleigh, who also Nobel Prize in Physics and Fellow of Trinity. I'm skipping a few more ancestors now, many of whom were at Trinity as well, but if you keep climbing up, you'll eventually get to Sir Isaac Newton, one of the greatest mathematicians and physicists of all times, as well as a Fellow of Trinity. And three further steps up to Galileo Galilei, the father of modern science, and whose portrait I am very privileged to have here in my room at Trinity College, Cambridge. I advised several others as well for part of their graduate studies, but of the five students who completed their PhD with me here at Cambridge, four have subsequently earned faculty positions in their respective countries in Europe, South America, Asia and North America, and one of them, Alastair Beresford, is even a full professor here at Cambridge like me. And so obviously uh, all of them and all of their students are also direct descendants of Newton and Galileo. If your mind is bursting with clever and exciting ideas and you are finally ready to leave your original mark in the field of your choice, then you should consider doing a PhD. And you will like this other video where I go in depth on that particular topic. And of course, if you end up doing a PhD in computer science with me, then one day you too will have Newton and Galileo as your academic ancestors.